Now, I know what you're thinking. Hardly anyone's watching Webb's videos anyway, so why bother with them? Unfortunately, in spite of what little attention they are getting, his erroneous videos have made an impact. All one needs do is look up Moonfaker Exhibit D on YouTube, and is instantly bombarded with tons of illegitimate videos by Phil Webb, alleging and propagating erroneous statements like Earth rocks in general have vastly more water than the Apollo samples, or that none of the Apollo rocks contain ferric iron or hydrous minerals, or that Earth rocks and Apollo rocks have different proportions of the same elements. This crap finds its way onto ApolloHoax.net, Wikipedia, and elsewhere. In fact, all it takes is a Google search of my name, or, from a less personal point of view, a Google search on lunar geology, and one is led to this site, for example, alleging that I think calcium is a mineral, among other things. This small minority of followers blindly follow behind Webb. Some of them even post links to the same sites that Webb used, not bothering to even read them and see how they heard his claims. The Wiki Vandal, for instance, in his word-for-word -word parroting of Webb's bullshit, posted a link to Friedman's paper on lunar water, which says that the water in the breccias is indeed comparable to that of their terrestrial cousins, and that it is not the result of contamination. Yet the Vandal continues to flog the claim that these samples are depleted in water by comparison, and that it got there through contamination. Until Webb can adequately defend what he claims is the number one proof, without resorting to straw men, omissions, comparing apples to oranges, quote mining and poisoning the well, and outright lying to his audiences, it's fair to say that the entire world's population has every right to doubt the moon rocks. Giving Webb his credits though, his critique series has given me the perfect opportunity to not only further cement my claims regarding the Apollo samples, but also discuss various new things that have popped up on this subject. The remote detection of water in the lunar poles, lunar meteorites that are different to the Apollo samples, eukrites identified as lunar meteorites and vice versa, the lunar origin theory of tectites, the L-cross impact, and so forth. All of these are tons of topics that I've been meaning to address for years, and Webb has given me the perfect opportunity to talk about them. But there is still one more topic I need to address. Having thoroughly shredded Webb's critique series, I'd like to say that I am done with him and free to talk about the Dutch Moonrock incident. But, would you believe it? It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The children of the world were fast asleep, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters. They did not know a little Grinch was out to spoil Christmas by muddying the waters. Yes, that Grinch goes by the name of Phil Webb, and let me promise you and say that evil Grinch's dead heart did not grow three sizes that day. That little Grinch thought up a lie, and he thought it up quick, and he sold it to the cheerfully blind like a gift from Saint Nick. The Grinch just had to attack the moon rock, the one that was nothing but petrified wood. Stay tuned for the final video in this series, in which we shall finish off the propaganda for good.
plans. Hello, vision is the retina of the mind's eye.